In this video, I'll be demonstrating how you can drive your models with data from QGIS. So instead of, as we have done here, we have downloaded um, data from um, OpenStreetMap and visualize it, we will um, use footprints from the Danish data that we have enriched in another video. Uh, we talked about how to calculate eave and ridge height and rooftops um, in QGIS. So we'll be using this data to drive how the models are generated in City Engine. I'll be um, demonstrating using this Paris rule package so you can uh, get the Paris rule package from all the portals if you just look for. Uh, rule packages, and if you say P, and there will probably be a Paris um, rule package. So this is the one that I'll be demonstrating. So one thing that you have to be aware of is that unless there's no standard for how what you call roof types. So sometimes they are called flat roof, sometimes they're called terraced roof, sometimes whatever. So you'll have always have to, when you want to drive a rule package or a rule in in, in City Engine, it's a good idea to look at what are the parameters, what do they call the different things. So we'll start out by applying this Paris rule set just to a uh, single roof, a single building. I'll drag, let's drag it on that one. So, um, what we can see is that we have so we have a level of detail. We have a number of floors. We have a ground floor height, a height, a tile width. So that is the width of the tile. So doors, window elements. We have um, the year. So that's something that controls the architecture of it. So if I have a, uh, let's say, uh, a modern building, it will change its its look depending on the year that I chose. So it has a year, and it has a uh, roof, and here we can have a hip, gable, mansard, gamble, and terraced. So these are the names that they use for the rooftops, which types of roof there is there. So we have to make sure that the names that we use are the same as these, because the basic of this is that any of these modeling attributes here can be managed by controlled by an attribute in the data set. But what the trick is that down here it says connected attribute, so I can connect to a data set that's underlying. So um, let's um, create a data set that is in QGIS that can match some of these um, attributes here and help us generate our model. So on QGIS, on the video on calculating 3D building data in QGIS, we uh, created this data set here, the geo package, and um, we have, let's just open its attribute table. Uh, So we have this is lots of standard attributes from the Danish cadaster. Um, what's interesting is what do we call all of these uh, different layer uh, types of of rooftops here? So hip and steep and flat. I think these are the ones I've been using, and they're not really called that in the model. So um, we have a a little updating to do. So, um, principle is first select our 
So I can save all of those that are based on uh, my rooftop. We have a roof class being equal to, what did I call them here? Uh, yeah. So uh, they are selected. And what I want to do with them is that I want to change them to hip but in lowercase. So update field, rooftop, hip in lowercase. Update, that's right. So that was all of them. Then those are called steep. I guess they are they were the ones that we call mansard. So um Chains steep and uh, just to check what they are called in the modeling. So here they are called mansard, yeah. So we will update them to. Sad and update field and and I guess that's uh, fine. So now only one is yes. man sad. Okay, um, make sure spelling is correct here. So that's hip and man sad and flat. What's the last one here? So where do I have my select there? That was also called flat. And select them and update them. The select don't need that anymore. Um, I'll update. Uh, we will set them to Um, I think they were called, and just make sure that the name is correct. So they were not terrace, but terrace, um, and update them. So now I have basically updated all of my um, attributes to match my values um, in my model. So, finished, save the data to my de Geo database. Make sure I have nothing selected and export my data to a format that they can read and that will be shape format, um, good old shape. And I'll just call them buildings. Buildings. Make sure that the coordinate system is the same as the coordinate system in your city engine. And that's it. One, the export. That's done. Go to city engine. In city engine, we can now get rid of our footprints from um, OpenStreetMap. And instead, we will. Um, Use a shape importer. This is one of the importers where you can go outside your workspace. So I didn't have to first place my data in the workspace. I can just say import. I want to import a shape file and browse to where I've stored it on my computer. Load it, coordinate systems, and all will. And now I have all of my buildings loaded from my shape file here. They are selected at the moment. So while they select, I might as well just take my Paris rule pack and drag onto one of them. So that's applied.
it will start generating the model um, and um, of course that's not necessarily super fantastic so I will while I'm just working I will turn off models and what we now want to do is that we want to change the settings yeah I want to have high detail floor well I don't know how many floors there is but I do know how tall the buildings are so given that the floor heights it can calculate the number of floors so this one I can set as a connected attribute so now it will ask me to where do I want to get the data and unless that there's if there had been a attribute that had been named height it would automatically have found it in this case I'll have to go out and say uh, so these are my shape buildings and the height is my max height from when I did my calculations so now they set and you can see it changes when it as it says it, that comes from my attribute then I might want to set if I had an attribute for layer I could use that but I had a attribute for my rooftop so I'll just say that connect to attribute again select the layer so my shapes buildings and select my roof class attribute and so on if you had more attributes so you had the year and the height of the floors and all of these other things you could set them again from the model so I'm happy and uh, let's see what this looks like um, So now my models are finished generating. Um, again here I had this one that I had statically modeled. Might all just get rid of that. So, so now I have um, all of my Copenhagen here model using the Paris rule pack um, of course I haven't set the year two of the buildings I could have if I hadn't had that knowledge but I have set the roof type and the height of the buildings from my QGIS data so they will have different heights as you can see and different types of roofs um, so all of this basically uh, demonstrates the use of taking a data set in QGIS, making sure that if you have named attributes, such as in um, the case of our models here, we had the we had the roof type and the and the material. If that has to match make sure that the names are spelled exactly the same both places then you can export the data to a shape format so export features to a shape that's um, making sure that the coordinate systems are the same as in your city engine and in city engine this is one of the situations where you don't have to drag it into your workspace first but you go to your importer and then you use the shape importer and then you use that to generate your models in order to make sure that the attributes get set correctly go to where you normally set your attributes in your inspector window and then in the drop down choose connect attribute and then locate the attribute in your shape file and that's it so um hope you found it useful and um, hope to see you in another video. So, bye.